Hello and welcome to Cooking the Books with Heather. And today we are going to be making a recipe out of the Pool's Diner Cookbook by Ashley Christensen. And we're going to be making short ribs the simplest way. This is a, a very basic recipe and there are a couple other recipes in the book that you can make after you've made these. So with the leftovers or um, with whatever, you know, you make these first and then make something else with them. Um, what we're gonna do today is just make these and eat them as they are. Um, and so maybe later we will make some of those other recipes. My husband uh, found these, he had to ask the butcher, it asks for a slab of short ribs, which is kind of hard to find. Usually they're cut up as far as I can tell in um, the grocery stores, you can buy short ribs cut up, but these are uh, just a slab of short ribs. This is probably about four pounds. The recipe calls for five, but it was, um, a 16 pound uh, slab, the whole thing. So we have extra to make those other recipes and then we cut it into to four pieces. So um, right now I'm just putting salt and pepper on it, liberally dusted with salt and pepper. Um, and there is no guidance as to whether uh, you should cook these bone up or bone down. Um, I'm going to start with them bone down for the uh, browning period and then put them bone up so the meat is in the braise for the second part. Um, I don't know if that's right, but that's what I'm planning on doing. That's what we usually do when we make ribs, um, that kind of thing. So, a lot of pepper. All right, liberally dusted salt and pepper. Um, and I've got this in a roasting pan that I can cover with foil because that's what I'm gonna do after this. And my oven is at 450 degrees convection or 475 um, non-convection. It goes in for 20 minutes and then you let it rest for 10 minutes before we continue. So we'll be back in about half an hour. I'm gonna go put these in the oven. My short ribs have been in the oven for 20 minutes, maybe a little bit more, didn't hear the beep. Um, and then they've been resting now for 10 minutes outside of the oven. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over. It already smells like delicious uh, beef uh, smell, but nowhere near done yet. Um, this has got to just going for a caramelized crust. So I turned it over so that the uh, meat part will be in the braise because you have to worry about that more than the bones. Anyway, that's my personal thing, not her. Nothing in the recipe about that. I just did it. Um, and now we put in some red wine. Uh, I like to buy small things of red wine. Um, my local grocery store either sells the little mini bottles or that sells them in um, sort of like milk carton, but with a spout. Um, it's just easier for me to use it for cooking wine, wine I'm going to cook with. It's easier. Uh, I can use a little bit and put it back in the refrigerator or use it all, use it all and not have a whole bottle that I have to deal with because we don't drink wine all that often. But anyway, she has some red wine and some water and we have, um, garlic halved along the equator again, just like in the steak recipe. And we're just putting this in here. We have some, uh, we might have some, uh, who knows what. Um, we have some rosemary that goes in and then some thyme. She calls for a particular amount of thyme. I just grabbed some out of the package and didn't count them like, you know, a normal person because um, they were all kind of tangled together. And that is it. Uh, I'm going to cover it with this aluminum foil and try not to burn myself while I do that. I'm gonna cover it 
tightly, I might have to get the other aluminum foil, the um, wider heavy duty stuff. Be right back. So this is the heavy duty aluminum foil, which we just buy in a wider. I'm gonna use these and try to crimp it around the edges. So we get a good seal. I don't know how hot the pan still is, but it was at 450, so you know it might be pretty hot. Alright, I think that's good. And my oven is now at 250 convection or 275 without convection. Mine's at 250 convection. And we put this in for four hours. You don't have to touch it, don't have to do anything. Just leave it in there for four hours. And we'll be back, we'll be back when that's done. Our ribs were in the oven for four hours and when you take them out, uh, I haven't looked at them at all. All you do is sort of pull up the edges of the foil to let it vent a little bit and let it sit for 20 minutes. Uh, mine's actually been sitting for a little bit longer. I put it in the oven on warm just to keep it warm because life happens, um, but it should be fine. So I'm gonna open this up for the first time. It smelled delicious while we were, uh, while we were baking it, but all right, there we go. Um, and now we're just gonna pull this out and hope it doesn't completely fall apart. And I'm gonna put it down like this because it's easier uh, with the bone up because it's just much easier to see where the bone is and, and cut it correctly. Um, and she says to basically, if you're gonna serve them just like this, to slice between the bones and serve them, you know, divide it among plates and serve them like that. Um, if you're going to make other recipes in the book, she suggests you let it cool completely before you slice it off the bone and then and chop it up um, however that recipe calls for. But So since uh, we're just gonna eat these as is and really there's no, you don't use that juice to make a sauce or anything in the recipe. This is just, the, the recipe is this, is, this is what you eat. Uh, we're just going to slice in between the ribs and divide that between plates, it sounds super juicy. You can see what that looks like. Uh, it looks like all the fat has rendered. They get a lot smaller because it is a lot of fat and connective tissue in the ribs, but it looks very meaty. Looks delicious. Let me go ahead and slice them all up. And there we go. There's our short ribs, the simplest way. So we had the short ribs, the simplest way, from the Pool's Diner cookbook for dinner tonight. And they were cooked very well. They were um, tender, not mushy, but but had a good uh, a good sort of bite to them. So it wasn't, you know, it wasn't too mushy. It wasn't too tough. So it was perfectly cooked. Um, they were flavorful but honestly I didn't get a lot of the wine or the uh, garlic or herbs from it myself and I think my husband said the same thing um, but they were delicious I mean it was beef you know, very beefy um, kids ate it which was really good and I think you really can't go wrong it was a very it was a super simple recipe as you said it take as you saw me make them it didn't take very long. It was, you know, one pan and the oven, it just took a lot of time in the oven, a lot of hands off time for this. So if, as long as you have the time to do that, it is in, very much worth it. Personally, I would really um, love to, to use some of the uh, juices and maybe make a sauce. I did not do that tonight, didn't really 
have time in my schedule for that, but I'm thinking about testing it out separately. I'll let you know in the comments below how that goes. Um, but yeah, I, I would certainly make this again. Family loved it. In fact, I have plenty more in the freezer. So I will be making it making it again and hopefully also make um, the short rib pot pie or the short rib hash also from this book that starts with this recipe and then builds upon it. So stay tuned to see that sometime in the near future. I hope you enjoyed watching me cook today. And if you did, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe and come back and watch me cook something else. Uh, recipe. I'm not even making noise. You are making noise. <laughs>